Recoleta is an affluent neighborhood in Argentina's capital city, Buenos Aires, with historic mansions and museums, high-end malls and stylish apartments, universities and embassies, and scenic parks. And most notably, it's home to the extraordinary Recoleta Cemetery, the final resting place for generations of the country's most important and wealthiest individuals and families. Here lie presidents and politicians, professors and publishers, military heroes and business leaders, scientists and sports legends. It's one of Argentina's top tourist attractions, with more than 700,000 visiting here each year. It's a national heritage site, with more than 90 tombs that have been declared national historic monuments. And the BBC hails the cemetery as one of the world's best. The cemetery lies beside an old monastery and church built in 1732 by a branch of Spanish Franciscan monks called Recoletos, who gave the local area its name. This extraordinary church of Our Lady of the Pillar is the second oldest church in Buenos Aires. The windows of its cloisters overlook the mausoleums that have been built over the past 200 years. But the cemetery had a humble beginning. In 1821, Almost 100 years after the church was built, the Recolette fathers were expelled by the local government. And the monastery's garden was converted into the first public cemetery in Buenos Aires. And it was called Northern Cemetery. Early occupants were buried in grassy plots with simple tombstones. A number of early modest tombs can still be seen today. At that time, the cemetery lay outside the city limits of Buenos Aires, and most of the local residents were poor. But that changed rapidly, as more and more wealthy families moved into the area seeking refuge from periodic outbreaks of yellow fever and cholera at the higher elevation of Recoleta. By 1881, the condition of the cemetery had deteriorated and an architect was hired to remodel the cemetery into a more fitting final resting place for wealthy families. Today, the cemetery has become a miniature city with city blocks, tree-lined main avenues, branching into smaller streets and narrow alleyways. This City of the Dead is small, a mere 14 acres or 55,000 square meters. Yet today it holds some 4,700 tombs and the remains of more than 350,000 departed. The entrance to the cemetery is a magnificent set of massive wrought iron gates supported by tall Doric columns. A brick wall encloses the entire cemetery. The tombs exhibit an amazing variety of architectural styles, shapes and sizes. Though smaller tombs may have only one corpse, larger tombs may have 20 and more, and several generations of a family may occupy a single tomb. Each mausoleum has the family name 
etched into its facade. Typically, etchings also record when the occupant died. Many memorial brass or bronze plaques show the names and images of family members. Effigies of the departed can be seen on many tombs. This is an elegant bronze representation of Governor Martín Rodríguez, who founded Recoleta Cemetery when he was Governor of Buenos Aires. This is a white marble image of Luz María Belloso, who died of leukemia when she was just 15 years old. The 1946 tombstone of Francisca Oliveira de Pineto displays the fading relief of her father. Religious icons embellish many tombs. Tombs also display inscriptions, symbolizing themes associated with life and death including Christ and the passage of time. Many of the entrances to mausoleums have elaborate doors. Looking inside the mausoleums, you'll typically see a crucifix placed above a small altar with the recently deceased in caskets beneath. Coffins may be covered with lace. Some crypts have stained glass windows. Crypts often contain personal mementos. Larger tombs have a staircase leading down to a crypt or storage area. In smaller tombs, access to lower levels is provided by a metal grate in the floor. One of the most noticeable features of the cemetery is the profusion of statues made of bronze, marble and granite. Some are clearly works of art. A large bronze statue of the Redeemer has been in the central plaza since 1914. The tomb of Italian-born artist Matilio Massone has strikingly large-scale reliefs surrounding his mausoleum. Many regard the extravagant sculpture on the Jose Paz mausoleum 
as the most beautiful in the cemetery. He built this tomb for his son's remains. Statues of grieving women are common. Because of the high number of angel sculptures, the cemetery has been called the City of Angels. The cemetery houses the remains of leaders of military campaigns and civil wars. General Thomas Guido fought during the War of Independence from Spain. His son built this stone vault with his own hands in tribute to his father. General Juan Galo Lavalle was also a hero of the Independence Wars. A grenadier who resembles Lavalle stands guard with instructions to tell him, should he emerge from his tomb, that his country loves him. Adolfo Alcina was Minister of War during the campaign to subdue indigenous tribes. He built a network of lookout stations that were connected by telegraph to major forts in what was once an indigenous territory. The mini outposts were critical to the success of the 1879 conquest of the desert when 14,000 indigenous people were taken prisoner and 4,000 killed. This mausoleum contains the remains of officers from Buenos Aires who were killed during hostilities with Paraguay or who died years later after honorable service to Argentina. General Pablo Ricchieri was responsible for organizing Argentina's modern army. He died in 1936 and his tomb occupies a prime position in the cemetery's central plaza. The bronze ship sitting on top of the green column celebrates an Irishman, Admiral William Brown, who founded the Argentinian Navy and was its admiral for 35 years. He won many battles against Brazil and even broke the 1841 British-French naval blockade. He died in 1857, aged 80, and his ashes are stored in this bronze urn that was forged from a cannon from one of his ships. His funeral service was officiated by a fellow Irishman, Father Anthony Fahey, whose memorial is just feet from Brown's tomb. Father Fahey was appointed chaplain to the Irish in 1844, and he brought hundreds of girls from his home parish in Ireland to be married in Buenos Aires. This magnificent Celtic cross is a worthy tribute to Father Fahey, though he's actually buried in the church beside the cemetery. The cemetery holds the remains of several former presidents of Argentina. A graceful effigy crafted by French artist Leon Fagel adorns the tomb of President Manuel Quintana, who died while in office. Pedro Aramburu became president after President Juan Perón was removed from office. A condor tops the mausoleum of Domingo Faustino Sarmiento, a popular president of Argentina. It was completed in 1883, five years before he died. This mausoleum houses the remains of insurgents slaughtered during the Revolution of 1890, which was an unsuccessful attempt to remove the administration of President Juarez Selman, who's also buried in the cemetery.
General Manuel Campos, buried nearby, was one of the leaders of the 1890 revolution. His brother, Luis Maria Campos, founded Argentina's War College in 1900. General Eduardo Lenardi led the coup d'etat that overthrew President Juan Perón in 1955. This sculpture was inspired by Michelangelo's Pieta and shows a female figure holding the departed in her arms. Ramon Falcon, who was chief police in Buenos Aires, was assassinated with a bomb thrown by an anarchist in 1919. His assistant, Juan Lartigal, was killed in the same attack. Some of the most impressive mausoleums were built by extremely wealthy families. This spectacular mausoleum of Dorego Ortiz Basualdo, a landowner, features a sculpture that depicts the New Testament's parable of the Ten Virgins. Proverano was one of thousands of poor Italians who emigrated to Argentina and is shown arriving by boat into Buenos Aires. He became very wealthy after opening a very successful cafe. Judges, scientists and other professions that made substantial contributions to Argentina are well represented in the cemetery. Dr. Luis Loire won the 1970 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his contribution to understanding how the body converts carbohydrates into energy. Pedro Arata, a chemist, made life better in Buenos Aires by improving city sanitation. Emma Nicolai de Caprile was an American school teacher who came to Argentina in 1870 to help establish US teaching standards. Architect Carlos Morro built this tomb for his daughter, who sadly died just aged 20. A public collection funded the construction of this beautiful mausoleum for Virgilio Teddy, a popular judge who died in 1893. This is the life-size statue of Luis Angel Firpo, who was Argentina's first world heavyweight boxer and was known as the Wild Bull of the Pampas. His record of 32 wins out of 38 title matches is impressive. This obelisk, crowned with an angel, is popularly known as the Cenotaph of the Three Friends, all artists who died within one year of each other. Recoleta Cemetery has fascinating stories about its notable inhabitants. The tomb of Eva Perón is perhaps the most visited tomb in the cemetery. The bronze doors always decorated with fresh flowers brought by admirers. Soon after President Juan Perón was removed from office by a coup d'etat, his opponents kidnapped Eva's embalmed body and hid it for the next 20 years in different places, including Italy and Spain. When her mummified body was brought back to Buenos Aires, nearly 25 years after her death. It was buried here five meters or 16 feet below ground in a heavily fortified crypt to protect her remains from further kidnapping. Salvador Maria del Caril and his wife had seven children together, but they did not get along. Senora del Caril spent a fortune on dresses, perfume and jewelry. After Senor Caril publicly announced that he would no longer pay her debts, his wife decided never to talk to him again and never did. Senora del Caril spent what remained of her late husband's fortune after he died 21 years later. She left instructions that her effigy should face away from her husband so that she would not have to look at him, even in death. Pierre Benoit, a successful architect, may have been the uncrowned King of France. His father claimed to be the last Bourbon King of France and Benoit escaped from prison in France and assumed a new identity in Argentina. According to legend, Isabel Valeski Colonna, buried in her godmother's family tomb, 
was the illegitimate grandchild of Napoleon Bonaparte. Born in Buenos Aires in 1847, she lived for just six days. This mausoleum, labeled Ida, shows a young lady reaching for a falling bouquet and dropping to her death from a balcony, which makes the tomb especially poignant. Twenty-six-year-old Liliana Corchati was killed by an avalanche during her honeymoon in Austria in 1970. Her parents placed this bronze statue of Liliana in her wedding dress outside her tomb, along with her beloved dog, Sabu. They say if you rub Sabu's nose, you will return one day to Buenos Aires. Like other cemeteries, Recoleta has its ghost stories. Rufina Cambaceres was a socialite in an illustrious family in Buenos Aires. In 1902, the 19-year-old collapsed, died, and was interred in Recoleta Cemetery. Some days later, caretakers noticed that her casket had been disturbed, and when they checked inside, they found her body bruised and bloodied, and the inside of her casket covered in scratches. Her family was horrified to discover that Rufina must have slipped into a coma, been buried alive, and on waking, struggled desperately to escape. Her parents placed this statue of Rufina in the dress she was wearing when she died. Some people say that her screams can still be heard as she tries to break out of her coffin. David Ayeno worked as a cemetery caretaker for 29 years and carefully saved enough money to buy a plot, commissioned the construction of his own tomb and the crafting of this statue of himself, along with the tools of his trade. Soon after the tomb and statue were completed, he committed suicide. Local residents claim to have heard the jangle of Ayeno's keys as his ghost walks through the cemetery. Most of the tombs are well maintained by a team of about 80 cemetery caretakers who sweep, dust and polish, repair caskets, renovate tombs and perform an endless list of other chores. A group of volunteer women feed and take care of the 80 or so feral cats that have made their home among the tombs. Owners of tombs must pay regular maintenance fees. However, there may be no descendants to pay them, and some families cannot afford them. So it's not surprising to see some tombs that have fallen into disrepair. If maintenance fees are not paid, the federal police may seize tombs in lieu of payment. The majority of tombs are family owned and are occupied by several generations of deceased. But ownership of tombs periodically changes hands. A family may decide to relocate caskets and personal effects to a new location and sell their tomb just like any other piece of real estate. The resale market for mausoleums is limited because of their enormous prices. Though some mausoleums may be priceless, tombs do change hands for prices from 30,000 US dollars to 500,000 US dollars and more. New owners typically renovate existing tombs rather than build expensive new structures. A less expensive option is to purchase a niche that can house a single coffin or several small urns. The cemetery has three columbaria along its outer walls. These were part of a project to increase the number of burial spaces available in Buenos Aires. Recoleta Cemetery continues to be a part of everyday life in Buenos Aires. 
Relatives and friends visit family tombs. And there are occasional funerals when a recently deceased is brought to slumber here for eternity. This wonderful necropolis will continue to serve the burial needs of some of Argentina's wealthiest families. And it will continue to attract millions of tourists, eager to see how the rich rest in luxury, even after death. If you do visit this sanctuary of the departed, be sure to heed the closing bell that rings 10 minutes before the gates are locked. If you don't, you may have to spend solitary time with the citizens of the City of the Dead.